as you know, my husband lost his leg last uh, in 2016 at the age of 49, working in London. Um, you know, had his leg amputated and then was reliant on me completely for four months until such time we actually, believe it or not, had to go and physically be assessed by the DWP with him in a wheelchair and a suction pump on because his leg had opened up. And you'd have thought with medical evidence that they wouldn't have put him through that, that they would have realised that he was severely disabled at that point and wouldn't need to go for an assessment. <coughs> anyway, he had the assessment and they gave him an award of the high rate PIP for two years, which allowed us to get a car through the motability scheme whereby he had had a left foot accelerator fitted because obviously you can't drive with the right leg missing and an automatic car so that he could actually get off his bottom and go to work every day as he works in Canary Wharf. That car and allowing him to get back to work was one of the major things in his recuperation mentally. It really helped him going back to work and getting back to normal. They gave us an award for two years and then they turned around at Christmas and said we have to be reassessed after a year. Well, why give people an award for two years if you're going to turn around after a year and say, sorry, we're going to reassess you because you've got your new leg. They're not all like Johnny Peacock, you know, and the Paralympians. These people struggle really hard when they first get their leg. It takes an awful long time and a lot of pain to get walking. So we now went for another assessment and because my husband could walk for 20 metres, bearing in mind he has to stop a lot of the time, he uses a walking stick. Some days when he gets up he can't actually get his leg on because his leg is swollen. Um, they said he could walk 20 metres or 20 yards or whatever it is and he'd, um, he could not have the car anymore. And the silly thing is, um, we have appealed on it, but because they've made the decision, the appeal has been heard on the 10th of April and we have to give the car back on the 27th of March. So if he does get the PIP reinstated, we have to go through the whole process again of getting a new car, which to me sounds absolutely ridiculous. Um, and I feel that they're not really looking at the real case, they just ha have a tick list for questions and then they just send you a piece of paper saying that's it, your time's up, we're going to remove it. Now I know people with bad backs and people who, um, you know, have silent disabilities and they don't, you know, they're deaf people and people like that, they don't take into account. All they're worried about is whether you can move 20 metres, which to me is absolutely ridiculous. Where can you go with 20 metres? I mean, my husband cannot get a bus to work, he cannot use public transport because he's got one leg, he won't get a seat on the train, so what do they want him to do? Give up work and then live off the state. It seems to me it's a bit, um, you know, short-sighted of them to do that. So, yeah, I think the system, the DWP have, I understand why they've done it because there's a lot of people who are using the system, but I think they really need to look at it again and see that everybody's individual and they're not doing that. Isn't it?